ESWL is a non-invasive medical procedure that is used to treat kidney stones, gallstones, and other conditions, that involve the formation of stones in the body. ESWL involves the use of shock waves to break down stones in the body. The procedure is usually performed on an outpatient basis and does not require general anesthesia. Patients are typically given a local anesthetic to numb the area being treated. During the procedure, the patient lies on a table, and a special machine is used to generate shock waves. These shock waves are directed at the area where the stone is located, using ultrasound or x-ray guidance to ensure that the waves are targeted accurately. The shock waves pass through the skin and soft tissue and are focused on the stone. The energy from the shock waves causes the stone to break apart into smaller fragments, which can then be passed out of the body through the urinary tract. These are some advantages of ESWL. ESWL has several advantages over traditional surgical methods for treating kidney stones. One of the main advantages is that it is a non-invasive procedure, which means that it does not require incisions or the insertion of instruments into the body. This reduces the risk of complications, such as infection and bleeding, and also results in a shorter recovery time. The success rate of ESWL depends on various factors, including the size, location, and composition of the kidney stone, as well as the patient's overall health. In most cases, ESWL has a success rate of approximately 65 to 75 percent. ESWL is also a relatively painless procedure. Patients are given a local anesthetic to numb the area being treated, and may experience some discomfort or mild pain during the procedure, but this is usually well tolerated and does not require the use of strong painkillers. Another benefit of ESWL is quick recovery time. Patient is discharged from hospital on same day. Very important and main advantage of ESWL is that there is no requirement of general anesthesia except in some case like in children so all risks of anesthesia are minimized. The primary indication for ESWL is the presence of kidney or ureteral stones, especially those that are too large to pass through the urinary tract on their own. And stone size less than 2 cm. Present in kidneys, ureters, and bladder. Before undergoing extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy (ESWL), several steps are taken to ensure that the procedure is appropriate and safe for the patient. These steps typically involve a thorough medical evaluation and preparation process, which may include the following. The patient's medical history is reviewed to identify any pre-existing medical conditions that may affect the safety or efficacy of ESWL. A physical exam is also performed to evaluate the patient's overall health and identify any potential risk factors. Imaging tests such as X-rays, CT scans, or ultrasounds are used to identify the location, size, and composition of the stone. This information helps the healthcare provider determine whether ESWL is an appropriate treatment option. Patients may need to temporarily discontinue certain medications, such as blood thinners or anti-inflammatory drugs, prior to the procedure to reduce the risk of bleeding or other complications. Patients may be instructed to fast for several hours prior to the procedure to reduce the risk of nausea or vomiting during the procedure. Patients may receive local anesthesia to numb the area being treated, or general anesthesia in case of children, make them unconscious during the procedure. Prior to the procedure, the patient is provided with detailed information about the risks, benefits, and alternatives to ESWL, and is asked to provide informed consent. By taking these steps before ESWL, healthcare providers can help ensure that the procedure is safe and effective for the patient. The patient will be positioned on a table in a way that allows the healthcare provider to target the stone with the shock waves. Depending on the location of the stone, the patient may be positioned lying face down, on their back, or on their side. During the procedure, the healthcare provider will monitor the patient's vital signs, such as blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen levels, to ensure that they remain stable.
Completion of the procedure Once the procedure is complete, the patient will be monitored for a short period of time to ensure that they are stable and do not experience any immediate complications. Patients will typically be scheduled for a follow-up appointment to monitor their progress and ensure that the stone has been completely eliminated. This may involve imaging tests such as x-rays or ultrasounds. In the next few hours to few days patients may experience some discomfort or pain after the procedure, and may be prescribed pain medication to manage these symptoms. Over-the-counter pain relievers such as ibuprofen or acetaminophen may also be recommended. Patients may be advised to make changes to their diet and lifestyle to reduce the risk of future stone formation. This may involve increasing fluid intake, reducing sodium intake, and avoiding certain foods that can increase the risk of stone formation. Although extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy ESWL, is generally a safe and effective treatment for kidney stones, like any medical procedure, it does carry some risks and potential complications. Some possible complications of ESWL may include Some minor bleeding in the urine or around the kidney. This is usually not serious and will resolve on its own. The second complication of ESWL is a small risk of infection following ESWL, although this is rare. In some cases, the stone fragments produced during ESWL may become lodged in the ureter, causing an obstruction. This may require additional treatment to remove the fragments. One more complication of ESWL may not be effective at completely breaking up the stone, requiring additional treatments such as ureteroscopy or percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Overall, ESWL is a relatively safe and effective treatment option for kidney stones, with a low risk of serious complications. However, it is important for patients to discuss the risks and benefits of the procedure with their healthcare provider, and to follow all post-procedure instructions carefully to minimize the risk of complications.